de Español. Hello everyone, welcome to this Spanish class. You know, I'm uploading a class daily, your daily Spanish class. I am Susana Lescano and I've been a Spanish teacher for so many years. Now my goal is that everyone learns and speaks Español. And for that, you know, I'm creating these videos, these live classes. So if you want me to record a specific topic or you have a question, just let me know in the comments. Now, this video, I really wanted to film it because it's something that even intermediate learners and advanced learners, sometimes they don't really know, they don't really understand. So I think it's a very interesting topic. And in this video, I will teach you some words that with or without accent change the meaning completely. ¿Listos? ¿Preparados? Vamos allá, let's go. Now, there's something important I want to tell you, and is that I want you to take notes because I know so many of them you probably don't know. So if you take notes, you will remember and it will be easier for you. But also, I want you to tell me in the comments or in the chat if you're live with me, um, I want you to please comment the ones that are, that are new for you, and I'm sure so many of them are new to you. <laughs> so please let me know in the comments. And vamos a empezar. Let's get started. I just want to remind you to subscribe if you haven't yet. And oh, what happened? <laughs> it says an unexpected error happened. But the, don't worry because I know what to do. So um, please don't forget to subscribe, comment, like this video and all of these things that I have here, because the fun way is the best way. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, follow this link, follow this QR. Y vamos allá. Let's get to it, okay? Do you have your notes? Do you have everything ready? Perfecto. Vamos allá. Entonces, so, hoy, and I will try to use Español, I will try to use as much Spanish as possible, but um, please activate this, the subtitles if you need some help with this. Now, hoy vamos a sumergirnos en un tema fascinante. Palabras que dependiendo de si llevan o no acento, tienen significados diferentes. So, let's get into a fascinating topic, which is words that have or don't have accents and they change the meaning completely. Vamos a ver algunas de esas palabras. Sí, así es. Una pequeña tilde puede marcar una gran diferencia. Estoy emocionada de compartir con ustedes 15 ejemplos de estas palabras. I'm excited to share 15 examples with you, though I think they are 14. They are 14 after all, you know I'm a bit. Loca. <laughs> Sin más preámbulos, comencemos. Mm, qué emocionante. Exciting. Número uno. Aún. Versus. Aún. So the sound is the same, okay? Even if some has accent and some doesn't. But um, the pronunciation in this case is the, is the same. Sometimes it may change. But in this particular scenario, it's the same thing. Aún. Nuestro nuevo primer par de palabras es aún con tilde y aún sin tilde. Parecen similares, aunque tienen significados distintos. Oh, esa manzana. So, aún con tilde se utiliza para expresar la idea de continuidad. We use it like um, todavía, like yet. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. Por ejemplo, aún no he terminado. I'm not done yet. Aún no he terminado. O aún puedo ayudarte. I can still help you. Aún puedo ayudarte. By the way, repeat after me so you practice your pronunciation and watch this video as many times as you need to. 
So that's aún with accent. Todavía. Or yet. But aún sin tilde. No accent. Works like incluso. Or también. Incluso también they mean to or even. Also works like hasta. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. Vendrán todos. Aún Juan. Everyone's coming. Even Juan. Vendrán todos. Aún Juan. O. Oh, no tengo mucho tiempo. Aún así. Haré mi mejor esfuerzo. That means, I don't have much time. But I will still make my best effort. No tengo mucho tiempo. Aún así haré mi mejor esfuerzo. So you can see, una pequeña tilde marca la diferencia entre expresar continuidad y añadir un sentido de inclusión. One is continuity. The other one includes people. Incluso Juan. Número dos. ¿Dónde versus dónde? Hmm, ¿Qué será? Por cierto, by the way, let me know in the comment section if you knew about aún. And be honest with me, okay? Número dos. ¿Dónde versus dónde? Pasemos al segundo par. ¿Dónde con acento y dónde sin acento? La palabra dónde es accent. Se utiliza para preguntar por un lugar o una ubicación. Most of you will know this. Like, ¿dónde estás? ¿Dónde vas? Mientras que, ¿dónde? Sin acento. No accent, ¿ok? Sin acento. Se usa para indicar un lugar o una situación. Place or a situation. Así que recuerden, el acento marca la diferencia entre preguntar por un lugar y simplemente señalar uno. Por ejemplo, oh, I, I didn't give you examples here, but I can. Let me see if I can write them in the chat so you can see them. Ok, so, por ejemplo, ¿dónde vas? Again, ¿dónde vas? ¿Dónde vas? Or, ¿dónde estás? ¿Dónde está mi lápiz? Right? Very simple. ¿Dónde está tu hija? ¿Dónde está mi amigo? And then, ¿dónde? No accent. It will work like, por ejemplo, mi hermana trabaja donde Luis. My sister works where Luis works. O, oh, el lápiz works like an answer to the other one. El lápiz está donde la mesa. Not en la mesa, donde la mesa, like in that zone. Where the table is, that's where the pencil is. El lápiz está donde la mesa. ¿Entienden? If you have questions, let me know. I will try to explain this more in depth. Ok, vamos a continuar. Vamos a continuar con tú. Tú versus tú. This one you also know it probably. Vamos a ver. Tú versus tú. Por cierto, by the way, let me know if the music está bien or is a bit too loud or too low. Me gusta. I like it. Now, estas dos palabras son perfectos ejemplos de cómo una tilde puede cambiarlo todo. Tú con acento es un pronombre personal que se utiliza para referirse a la segunda persona del singular. Ok, so tú means you. Mientras que tú sin acento es un posesivo que significa tuyo o de ti. So, yours or your. Tuyo o de ti. 
Así que cuidado con esa pequeña tilde. Puede cambiar todo el significado. May change the whole thing. Now, why didn't I give you examples for this? That's okay. Thankfully, we have the chat here. Así que vamos a hacer. Let's do it. You can also try to um, give me examples down there. So I tell you muy bien or muy mal. For example, tú with accent can be used like tú eres genial. That's what I say to all of my lovers of Castilians, which is my Facebook group. You can follow me there, ask me any questions, join. It's in the description. Tú eres genial. You are great. Tú eres mi amigo. You are my friend. Right? That's with the accent. But tú with no accent would be used like... Este es tu libro. Este es tu libro. This is your book. Which, by the way, is a good chance. So I show you Spanish the Fun Way book. It's the best book that you will ever have to learn Espanol. It has all the examples you need. It has illustrations. Muy, muy bueno. The fun way. Scan this QR code, get it directly on Amazon or on my website, Spanish.education or I love you in Spanish. Este es tu libro, okay? O este es tu teléfono. De acuerdo? Este, esta, tu no accent is yours. Sigamos. Let's continue. Vamos con el versus el. Hmm. El versus el. Hmm. Sigamos adelante con el y el. I know it looks so similar and it's difficult sometimes, but not really. Es fácil, es fácil. It should be easy for you to see the difference. Because el con acento es otro pronombre. Just like tú with accent, well, is él. Pero se refiere a la tercera persona del singular. Es decir, él. So, él means he. El with accent means he. Por otro lado, el sin acento es un artículo definido que utilizamos para referirnos a algo en general. In general. So, el no accent means the. The can also be la. The in Spanish, T-H-E, can be el, la, los, or las. All of these things. But, el with no accent is the masculine singular. You know how Spanish is about that. Recuerden que el acento marca la diferencia entre un pronombre personal y un simple artículo, ¿verdad? Ahora, before continuing with one of my favorites, vamos con los ejemplos. Let's go with the examples. So, él, we can say, él es mi hermano. He's my brother. Él es el mejor. Best. Él es el mejor. Now, él, no accent. El niño, the boy. Remember, él is the or just masculine singular. El niño se llama Juan. El niño se llama Juan. El abuelo es amable. The grandpa is nice. For grandpa, but in Spanish we do have to say el abuelo. El abuelo es amable. I hope you're taking notes. And let me know in the comments or here in the chat. What is it that you knew and what you no sé, what you didn't know yet? Vamos a continuar. Yes, I'm from Spain. Now, C versus C. 
broken mailless <laughs> mailless i'm recording a video for youtube but please let me know all the questions you may have okay i'm from madrid spain ah i know right i'm from madrid and i disapprove but hey it looks good in the video okay <laughs> i said the same thing i was like yeah i was like why is this why are these flags on my <laughs> on my video uh, I don't approve of that, but hey, a lot of people uh, like that, you know, the, the Catalonian independence. But I'm from Madrid, so they are like enemies. <laughs> no enemies, but you know. <laughs> C versus C. Broken maiden list. Do you know the, the difference between these two? Tú sabes un poquito de español. Sadly, no. Well, not sadly. That's what I'm making the video for. <laughs> muy bien, muy bien. I like that. That's the attitude. That's what my channel is for, right? My goal is that. You can learn some some Spanish because it helps, right? It's helpful to know Spanish nowadays. So, C versus C. That's the thing in Spanish that one accent changes the whole meaning. That's the case here too, right? Well, you probably know C with accent because that means yes, right? That's that's very common. C with accent means yes or yeah. C. But C with no accent means if we are right. But Spanish is not difficult, I promise. So C with no accent is like if, like voy a aprender español. Si sí, puedo. I'm going to learn Spanish if I can. Si <laughs> sí, puedo. But C with accent is like si sí, voy a aprender. Yes, I will learn. See. Sí. Ah. Me versus me. Tan tan tan. <laughs> Vamos a ver. It's the same as before. I don't know if you were here, but we had an example very similar to this with your and you. So you is tu with accent. Your is also tu, but no accent. Here is the same thing. It's like uh, me with accent. It's like yo. It's like pronombre de objeto. But me, no accent, is my. It's almost the same as in English when you say me, but it's written differently. For example, a me, me gusta aprender. Right, like, I like to learn. A mí me gusta aprender. O, Eso es para mí. That's for me. Eso es para mí. First one with accent. Second one, no accent. Eso es para mí. It's a bit confusing, but it's important, right? It can change the whole meaning. Oh, thanks for watching. Are you watching on, on Twitch? Because I'm new to all of these um, streaming things and I'm streaming to a few platforms let me know where are you watching on kick oh nice kick is a new is a new platform but I'm liking it yeah exactly I'm multi-streaming but I'm new to this so I don't really know where <laughs> where I am but uh, oh kick nice yeah I love kick it's a bit more you know user friendly than than twitch creo I think. But it's really it's really cool. I thought it was just for gamers. 
for gamers. At first I was like, oh, maybe no one's watching, but I'm glad people want to learn Espanol. Because it's my language, you know. Okay, next one. Solo versus solo. Usually in Spanish, when you have an accent, that changes the pronunciation, right? So when it's a longer word, it makes more sense. But here, because it's just two, two, um, like two vowels and they are the same, you can't barely tell. But yeah, what I mean is this should sound, should sound different solo and solo but it's not the case because it's a short word now the meaning is completely different and this can be confusing solo with accent is like only or just right solo quiero aprender español i just want to learn spanish solo quiero aprender español but solo with no accent is like alone. <laughs> so it can be like, quiero aprender español solo. The difference can be like, I just want to learn Spanish or I want to learn Spanish by myself. It's completely different, right? Because again, solo con acento with accent, it means just or only. But solo, sin acento, no accent, it means alone by yourself. <laughs> Broken, made unless do you feel solo with no accent, do you feel alone? Espero que no, I hope not. Que no te sientas solo. <laughs> I hope you don't feel alone. But you see, like, the, the accent can can make a huge difference, right? Just or alone. <laughs> que versus que. Que is what? Here, thankfully, no Catalonian independence in it. Que <laughs> with accent is what? But que, no accent, means that. Like T-H-A-T. That. It's muy different. Yeah, that was a protest, but at least not, not in, Cat not in Catalonia, right? <laughs> so, que con acento, with accent, is used to make questions like, que te gusta, what do you like, or que quieres, what do you want, but que sin acento, means that, like, no sé qué hacer, o no sé qué es eso, I don't know what that is, that's a bit confusing because I don't know what that is, it has what and has that, but que with no accent is just the second part, it's just that, hmm, I'm trying to think on, of a better example, you know? Yeah, it's true that if you watch telenovelas, you can learn Spanish. I get that question a lot. But it's not just telenovelas, right? It's if you are exposed to Spanish for a very long time, you can learn Spanish. I don't really recommend telenovelas as much because, you know, the usually the, the themes are a bit... I don't know, I watch some telenovelas, but if you have Netflix, yeah, exactly, no, but if you have Netflix, I recommend more like, yeah, they are always about romance, telenovelas are about romance, and this, and this is so good, and this is so bad, but uh, I recommend, for example, there's a Spanish TV show that is called La Casa de Papel, in Spanish, it's like Casa de Papel. In English, it's like the, the money haste, I think it's called. The, and that's super interesting. It's like action and it's from Spain. So you can watch that and watch many, you know. Yeah, that one is good. I recommend. It's not my favorite, but I would say watch 
that one instead of telenovelas, watch Spanish movies. Netflix is full of those Spanish comedies. Oh, Narcos is really good. I love, love, love Narcos. Only I think the first seasons, not, not the one in Mexico, you know, the other one. Yeah, but it's okay with the accent. You know, it's so similar to... Like, we understand Spanish. Like, I easily understand Spanish from Colombia, from Mexico. It's pretty much the same. It's more like, you know, English from from England versus English, English from America or Canada or things like that. But I think Spanish is even more similar. Than, than the different English. So it's okay, you can watch things from, from Latin America even if you want to learn Spanish from Spain, let's say. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an online Spanish teacher. I have an academy online, but it's for kids. I teach um, children, well, 3 to 18, but I recently hired a lot of people from, you know, many Spanish-speaking countries. No, in outschool.com. Yeah, and I hired some teachers now, so I'm more dedicated to making these videos, promoting the academy, more to the marketing side. Yeah, 3 to 18, I'm teaching there. We are teaching there. And you can definitely learn um, Spanish online. You know, you don't have to go to a, to a physical academy, but yes, I do recommend you watch Many TV shows that you can, but really important, telenovelas or, or TV shows or whatever, but don't watch them with English subtitles, okay? Do you have to watch with Spanish subtitles? I know at first you won't understand, but give it a try, okay? And <laughs> you want to move there? We are to Spain. I'm in Spain right now. It's really nice. It's really nice in here. Where are you moving from? Where do you want to move from? Oh, from Romania. Well, in Catalonia, yeah, there's a lot of jobs. So you can you can work from from there. It's really nice. It's not bad. I'm just from Madrid, so we are kind of enemies. But <laughs> there are a lot of people from from Romania, Romania, I would say, from Romania here. But you do have to speak uh, Espanol. <laughs> you have to learn. So pay attention. <laughs> the versus the. Okay. Oh, Barcelona. You liked it. Be careful, though. They say Barcelona is a bit dangerous these days. That's what I've heard. That they can, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, yeah, it's true. Romanian is similar to Spanish and Italian, too. That's right. But yeah, it has to be... It has to be easy for you to learn Spanish because I know so many people from Romania here in Spain and they speak really good Spanish. So... It has to be easy, you know? So, the versus the. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Careful with that. Now, the versus the. The con acento. So, look how Spanish is. The with the accent is, um, is a form of the verb. It's a conjugation of the verb dar which is to give. De, with accent, is the second and third person. La segunda y la tercera persona del singular, del imperativo. So, for example, we say, De esa cartera. Give that wallet back. De, <laughs> to the woman, De esa cartera. Right? De. Es un imperativo, like we, we tell someone what to do. De esa cartera. Give that wallet. De. That's with accent. We don't use it a lot. But de, with no accent, we do use it all the time. Which is of or from. For example, you could say 
Yo soy de dónde? Where? De Rumanía. Oh, very good one. Or carne de vaca. Like the meat of the cow. Like carne de vaca is like red meat, right? But we use that formula all the time. Carne de vaca, carne de cerdo. Pig's meat. Oh, we use it all the time. Or um, soy de Cataluña, soy de Madrid. Or vengo, I come from. Vengo de Cataluña, I come from a, a protest. <laughs> we use it every single day. It means of or from. Or for example, El día de mi cumpleaños. This is my birthday. Birthday. El día de mi cumpleaños. It's a formula. We say this, then, that. Completely different. Versus de. De is give right now. Do give or he give. De. Ah, oh, we do. But in Romanian, you do have genders for everything too, right? Dia. Yeah. Dia is weirdly masculine because it was supposed to be feminine because it ends in A. Do you know when words ends in A in Spanish? They tend to be feminine. So... Um, right, so um, el día was not supposed to be masculine, but it is. El día de mi cumpleaños. In Spain, I mean in Spanish, you know, we also have some neutral. Not at all of, a lot of people know about our neutrals. They're not very common. You know, 90% of things, not just people and animals, but 90% of things are either masculine or feminine. But we do have some, some neutral. I will... I will prepare a class about that, it's really interesting. But I think in Romanian you do have a lot more neutrals than we do, yeah. And I think you do have accents too, right? It's, it's very interesting, you know, the, the Romans languages. Right. Oh, I would like to learn all the languages in the, in the world. You have accents too. Ah, but do they change the meaning like this, like in Spanish? I don't think so. They probably have, you know. Oh, because I told you, because here in Spain I have so many friends who are from there. They tried to teach me some things and I couldn't really learn but I remember those kind of things but I know English and Spanish you know that that's enough for me <laughs> no I want to learn um I know some English I know some Spanish I want to learn Chinese next I know some French too Chinese and then maybe Romanian and German just pronunciation right yeah, I've seen also some conversations between people from, from Romania and they, you know, I saw the accents there, but they are also the different accents, right? Oh, like Portuguese. Okay. Bueno, el portugués. Portuguese is also um, easy. Like, we can easily... I understand, like, if I hear some Portuguese, I understand, but right, like, yeah, Romanian doesn't sound like so similar, but it's cool, it's cool. Hey, maybe someday you teach me Romanian, okay? I teach you some Spanish. <laughs> well, in my channel, you have um, Spanish videos you can, you can already start learning. En la casa de papel, when you heist, then you're all set. No telenovelas. <laughs> Okay, so 
¿Cuál versus cuál? Let me tell you. ¿Cuál es which? ¿Cuál? Let me know if you see some similar. Oh my. It's so interesting to know if you have, um, you know, if some words are similar to Romanian, like they kind of mean the same. I don't think we have many of those, but just in case, let me know. So, ¿cuál? Con acento. With the accent. Means which. Which. Y cual, sin acento, no accent, es un pronombre relativo, es un relative pronoun, that means que, it's also a bit like that, like for example, oh no, I didn't receive the, I think you sent an emoji, but I didn't receive it, crazy que, oh, Maybe if I was on kick, you see, I need to stream directly on kick. <laughs> oh, that's good vibes emoji. How do you know that? Just, oh, because you saw it shows for you. <laughs> Gracias, Gracie K. Thanks. Can you send me a Spanish flag emoji? And Romanian flag, please. It shows. Oh, nice. <laughs> So, cual is like a uh, which, like, cual te gusta más, which one do you like better, right? But cual is that, like, cual es el mejor. Oh, gracias. Thanks. Why do I see that and I don't see the crazy K one? <laughs> I see those. Me gusta. <laughs> I love it. And you know how the flags from Latin American countries are so I are a bit confusing sometimes, at least for me. Like Colombia and what's the other one? Colombia and Venezuela, for example, they are so similar. Sometimes my own teachers, when I hire them, they have the this flag and I'm like, are you from Venezuela, right? And they're like, no, I'm from Colombia. Ah, I'm supposed to know these things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There are so many countries who speak Espanol right but maybe it's just me that i'm not good with flags but and also the romanian one is so similar to which one i know there's one there's one that is similar to that one too right all right c versus c this one i want you to know I want you to know C with accent. Yeah, some African one, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. This is what I want you to tell me. C. I want you to someday to tell me. C español. Because C is I know. C with accent is I know. Someday you will say C español. I know some Spanish. C, with no accent, is again like, es un pronombre reflexivo. It's a reflexive pronoun or impersonal. And you know what that means? That means a little bit what we were talking about before, about the neutrals in Spanish. That's a bit what C, with no accent, is. It's a bit of a neutral. For example, no se sabe quién ha ganado. El partido. We don't know who won the match, but no se sabe is more like it's not known who won, right? It's a bit of a, of a impersonal or neutral. Se puede ver la torre. The tower can be seen. 
not like I can see the tower from here, or you can. It's just se puede ver. It can be seen. It's more like it in English, you know? Se puede ver la torre. That we use a lot too. It's not the same when it has the accent, which is I know. I'm sure, I'm sure. Do you know how to say um, I don't know? How do you say I don't know in Spanish? I'm pretty sure you know how to say that. Don't tell me you don't know. And don't look it on Google, okay? <laughs> no creo. Okay, okay. That, that also works. But no creo is more like, um, I don't think so. No crees. I don't think so. No creo. No creo. But I don't know is no sé. No sé. Right? I, I tell all of my students to say that. Because sometimes people are, are shy to, to recognize they don't know something, but it's perfectly fine to not know something, right? So I tell them, it's okay, don't worry. You can say, no sé, I don't know. Or no creo, no creo too. No creo is, um, yeah, I don't think so, no creo. You can reply that too, maybe, like, I don't think I know that, no creo. Well, you do know some Espanol. <laughs> you know, I'm creating classes for all levels, but this one was more of an intermediate or advanced class because... Um, it's, it's a bit difficult to to know when a word has accent or when it doesn't. Oh, you do watch TV shows in in Spanish too. That's nice. All right, mass versus mass. That's cool. Mass. Mass is a word I love. Mass means more. You know how in English some people say like, or no, actually in Spanish, some people say like, menos is mass, less is more. But I don't agree on that. I think mass is mass. <laughs> More is more. Oh yeah, American TV shows have Spanish too. Yeah, because, you know, I've lived in the United States for a while and um, the Spanish culture there is huge. Like they have a lot of people from Latin America in the United States. So, but that's one of the reasons they, they want to learn Spanish. That's nice. I like that. I like that influence. Oh yeah, I was, yeah, I was, um, no, I was living there. It was not just traveling, but um, I was living there for eight years in America, in Miami. Very nice too. Mass with accent. We use it to express, um, oh, with a visa. No, I moved there with my family. My dad is an American, so I could, uh, yeah, it's a long time. I could move there. You know, I had the, I have my, my passport. Otherwise, it's really difficult. Yeah. But you can, uh, you can be there for three months, you know, on, um, just for holidays. And yeah, if you have some, you take some college or something like that, you can maybe 
live there is hard or you get a job if you're really good at what you do maybe you can get a good job but yeah for eight years that's where i learned english otherwise we wouldn't be talking <laughs> because i only knew spanish here in spain <laughs> okay we have i think um two more examples left but i want you to watch this video serious okay because you have to be serious if you want to learn a new language like watch your tv shows daily take your spanish class on youtube with me daily and you know you have to be serious about it take notes on what you find is difficult <laughs> so más con acento is is more basically more like more coffee más café but más with no accent it means pero pero or sin embargo these two words mean but like i don't like traveling but stay in spain not really but you know what i mean <laughs> But I prefer like más es más, more is more. <laughs> más es más. Una tilde puede marcar la diferencia. So in this case, it's so important because más with no accent means pero, but it's a contradiction. So if you see más with no accent, it means the opposite of what you read before. Me gusta viajar, más no ir a África, for example. I like to travel, but not to Africa, for example. But más with accent is more, like, me gusta más viajar. ¿Sí? Oh, solo dos más. Just two more broke and made the list. Solo dos más. But this is a serious class, okay? <laughs> what do you think is the difference between those two? One is obvious, I think. Te versus te. This one is easy. See, it's true, it's true. Oh, te amo. I love that one. Te amo. I love you, right? Oh, qué bonito. Exactly. And what do you think is te with accent? I give you a hint. I give you a hint. It's a drink. <laughs> a hot drink. Well, you can take it with ice too. Exactly, it's T, yes. <laughs> so, te, no accent. We use it for te amo, it's basically to you. But T with accent is te. We can say te caliente, hot tea, or te con hielo. Tea with ice or iced tea, we say te con hielo. Cerveza. <laughs> How come you know cerveza? So you don't know no sé, you don't know the verb to know, but you know cerveza, I see, I see. <laughs> well, in Spain, you can have cerveza, all you want. <laughs> in Barcelona. Me too, me too, but I don't, I don't drink, you know. I prefer agua. <laughs> I prefer not, not to drink too much, you know. Agua or café. Yeah, I know Spain is famous for fiesta, you know, party, cerveza, beer, but, but that's really good too, because, you know, tourism is one of main Spain's um, economic resources, so it's good for Spain to have fiesta and cerveza and tourism, so thanks for coming, and I'm glad you want to come back, right? <laughs> Oh no! See what happened! Another one of another mistake. We have two mistakes in these videos that I made. First one was the Catalonian flex in my Spanish class. And second one is two versus two. We have two twice. 
and it's the same one, but it's supposed to be two with accent versus two with no accent. Yeah, it's the same and we learned that one already. I think you weren't here. <laughs> you weren't here, but um but we yeah, I think no, you were here actually. Two with accent? No, two with accent is you. With accent. Two with no accent is like two it is. I think I think I told you two is genial, like two are great. That's with accent. It's you. No accent is your. Exactly. And no accent your. Like tu am. Yo soy tu maestra. I'm your teacher. <laughs> O oh, este es tu libro, that's your book. Sí, muy bien. <ríe> Yo soy tu profesora, muy bien. Profesora o maestra, exactly. <ríe> Muy bien, muy bien. You don't know all the basics. Cerveza, profesora, te amo. That's all you need to know. Pretty much. <laughs> okay, me tengo que ir. I have to go. I have to work on my academy. But please um, subscribe so you don't miss it. Or follow me here on Kick. Kick is nice. I love Kick. Uh, by the way, is the music bien? Is the music okay? I can control it here. Is it too loud? Is it too low? It's okay. Okay. Gracias. It was nice to talk to you. I'm creating a class every day around this time. It's 8 for us, right? It's 8 in Madrid. 8 and a half, I guess, for you is maybe 7, maybe 7 p.m. So about this time, I'm creating a daily class. I'm streaming and then I upload it to YouTube, so it's okay, don't worry, if you miss it someday, you can go watch it there. Gracias, thank you for being here. And for the emojis, Chrissy K tried, but I'm also thankful, but I didn't receive the emojis, okay? <laughs> Adios, nos vemos. Yes, I'm trying to create a class daily, daily at about this time. That's why I have some mistakes like the Catalonian flags. But we try to fix that. <laughs> Nos vemos mañana. Adios. Adios with accent, okay? And the O. <laughs> Adios. Nos vemos. Take care. Bye. <laughs>